Hello, and welcome to the Blender Basics video series. These videos are designed to accompany the chapters found in the Blender Basics tutorial book and not as a replacement. So if you don't have a copy of the book already, head over to www.cdschools.org slash blenderbasics to download a free copy. This video will focus on chapter 3, Creating and Editing Objects, Part B. And as we begin with this chapter, if you notice, um, I already have the uh, chapter up on the screen right now. We're going to look at some more of the uh, elaborate editing tools that you can use to make your life easier to turn these primitive shapes into some something that really can be usable for you. So uh, after you watch the video I would still recommend reading the chapter and making sure that uh, you have a good grasp on these tools. The uh, large activity that goes along with this chapter will be making a lighthouse scene. So we will begin with this chapter and this activity will span over several chapters. So we'll make a separate video for actually mod modeling the lighthouse after this video. So if I move over to Blender right now, we start out with our basic Blender scene. We have a cube, we have a lamp, and we have a camera. I'm going to select the cube, hit the delete key on the keyboard, and delete the initial cube. And I'm going to hit spacebar, add object, mesh, and add a UV sphere. And remember the spacebar will only work if you've gone to the file pull down menu, user preferences, and turned on the dynamic spacebar option in the uh, add-ons. So I have a cube to begin with. One of the first things I'm going to talk about here would be setting it smooth or setting it flat. If I hit F12 right now to render a video, you'll notice that, uh, render a picture, you'll notice that this sphere is actually very faced off right now, very geometric in shape. If I wanted it to be smooth, in your tool shelf you have two options in here, smooth or flat. Those would be the basic options to make something look good. And we're going to show you a command called auto smoothing a little bit later in this video. So let's make it smooth to look good or flat right now. Uh, let's go into edit mode. And remember again, you can access edit mode down here at the bottom of the screen or by hitting the tab key on your keyboard. Right now you are set up to select individual vertices. And if I hit G to grab, you can grab a vertice. Um, what we could do is uh, we could also select edges to select individual edges. I'll hit G on the keyboard. Or you can select individual faces. So how do you select multiple things in Blender? First way to do that is you can hold down the shift key while you click on objects and you can select more than one object at a time by holding down the shift key. So I can grab those, I could use R to rotate them, I could use S to scale. All of the main manipulators work in edit mode as they do in object mode. Now there are other ways to select things in Blender. If I wanted to do a uh, box select or a circle select, you would use the keys that correspond with those. If I hit B for box select, I can hold down my left mouse button and select a large area. Uh, I'm going to hit A for all in my keyboard right now because A will either deselect all things or select all things when you hit A. So we're going to hit A to deselect everything. Another way to select things would be with a circle select by hitting C on your keyboard. When I hit C, you'll see a little box will show up. I can scroll my mouse wheel to make that selection area larger or smaller. If I hold down my left mouse button, I can kind of paint a line across it to select things. If I hold down the mouse wheel, I can deselect. And if I use the right mouse button, it gets me out of it, which would be the same as hitting the escape key. So C for circle, you can change the size of the selection area, and you can use your left mouse button to select things. And then escape or right mouse button to get out of it. Now, if you notice, this is a three-dimensional object. As I was selecting objects in solid shading right now, you have to ask a question, did I select the things on the back side of this sphere at the same, same time? If I spin it around, you will see that the answer to that is no. So we were only selecting those faces that were visible to my current view. Now, if you wanted to select things all the way through, there are two ways to do this. If I click on this small button down here beside the um, edge, vertex, or face command, it basically says limit selection to what's visible. If I click that, you'll now see through your sphere and you can actually see the faces behind it. So if I hit A to deselect everything, do a circle select again, and I select a circle select all the way down through there, escape to get out, and if I spin it, you'll see that the objects behind it were selected at the same time. So if I look at it in this view, do a circle select, and just do this, as I spin it, you'll see I got the ones on the back as well. 
So this button used to be called Occlude Background Ge Geometry. They gave it a name that makes a little bit more sense to everybody. Another way that you could select all things all the way through your shape is to actually switch from solid viewing to wireframe. So you have solid or wireframe. Again, don't worry about the other ones right now, but solid or wire. And wire, you're looking at things like it's a transparent three-dimensional mesh is how you're looking at stuff. And if I do a circle select in here, you'll notice that I got everything all the way around it. Wireframe is actually a good place to work many times. So, um, wireframe is kind of nice. If you're interested in a keyboard command to do the same thing as me going down here and choosing between solid and wire, that would be the Z key on your keyboard. The Z key will toggle you between solid or wire. And again, to toggle you between edit mode and object mode, that would be the tab key. So you have two key commands right now that you can really make use of. Okay, so you got the Z key and you got the tab key. Tab goes from object to edit and it's back and forth. So some of the other things that we can look at in this chapter. And again, remember you need to be in object mode when creating new objects or they'll automatically be joined together. We'll talk later about how to separate things. We've already talked about flat and smooth, so let's talk about um, changing the shape of stuff. Um, there are a bunch of commands that are available that we discuss in this chapter. Right now I'm going to switch back to vertex select and select a single vertex on this sphere. If I hit G to grab, all I'm doing is selecting that single vertex. I'm moving it somewhere. If you want to make it more smooth and more flowing, there's a command here called relative vertex keys, and that's this little tiny gray bullseye down here on the bottom of your, uh, your 3D view window. Proportional editing, and if I enable it, you have a couple different fall off shapes that you can work with. And if I just keep it at the default smooth fall off, if I hit G to grab, you'll notice that I'm selecting more than just the vertex that's selected. And if I scroll my mouse wheel larger or smaller, you will have a larger proportional area that you're you're affecting. Okay, so what are the different fallouts? This is smooth. If I hit G to grab, you see that it kind of comes out smooth. Another popular one would be sharp. And you'll see it comes out more as a point. And there are all kinds of crazy shapes here now that you can do different things with. Random will be more or less. Um, and it's a very popular command to work with. Okay, so proportional editing has a lot of benefits to work with. You just have to be careful that it's turned off, disabled when you don't want to use it. Because it can be a little bit of a pain to work with. So, a little bit of basic editing commands that work within this program. I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to delete this UV sphere. I'm going to add a circle right now. Add mesh, add a circle. Circles are not filled by default. Remember we talked about this bottom part of the tool shelf over here that controls the quality of your mesh, where you can ch set the number of vertices, the, the radius, and your fill type. I'm going to choose triangle fan. Now what that means is it just filled the object. If I were to go into edit mode right now, either changing it down here or hitting the tab key, you'll notice it looks like a bunch of pie wedges right now. So we filled this circle so it's a solid object. So again, you always do that down the tool shelf in the bottom half after you add something. I'm going to switch to a wireframe. So again, you can change it here, or you can hit the Z key to change it to wireframe. I'm going to go to a number one front ortho view. And we're going to introduce you to a command called extrude. So right now I have a circle. Let's say I want to turn that circle into a chess pawn or something like that. I'm going to pan down a little bit. Remember, I held down shift key and held down the mouse wheel to pan. Hopefully, you've practiced with that a bit. Go back to a number one front view, and I'm going to hit E on my keyboard for extrude. And you'll notice I'm making a copy of those verti vertices going up. So if I want to make a chess pawn, I'm going to do this quickly and, and pretty easily with a little bit of practice. I'm going to hit E to extrude, place them, hit S to scale, make them smaller. Hit E to extrude again. And let's say I want some type of a little shape in the middle here. E up again, S to scale it out. E to extrude again, S to scale it smaller. E to extrude, E to extrude, scale. We're going to try to make this look a little bit like a ball. So again, I'm going out with a little bit of shape here. And with a little bit of practice, you can get used to doing a lot of interesting things here. 
I'm going to intentionally make a mistake on this. I'm going to hit E to extrude, and then I'm just going to accidentally like right mouse button click or hit escape to get out of that command. Right now, what I've done is I've taken that set of vertices that I've made and placed them on top of the existing set of vertices. This can be a huge, huge problem in Blender because now when I hit E to extrude again, I have no idea that there are vertices sitting on top of another set of vertices. And that can be a problem. And we're just going to say this is a pretty rough pawn shape, but let's just say that's my chest pawn. Okay, let's switch to solid viewing. And there's my chest pawn. Okay, let's go to solid, let's go to back to object mode. And it looks a little rough, a little geometric. If I want to smooth that out, I could hit the smooth button over here in the tool shelf. And that helps a little bit, but you'll notice things don't look quite right. Um, I think Blender should move the Auto Smooth feature over to right here below the Shading Smooth command. But it's always been over on your tool shelf side in your Object Data buttons. The Object Data button looks like a triangle when you have a mesh selected. That button right there changes depending on what you have selected. It now looks like a camera. If I select a lamp, it now looks like a lamp. Again, you can't select other objects unless you're in object mode. So if you're still in edit mode, you won't be able to select the camera or the lamp. Okay, so if I select this, there's my object data button. Here's a button called auto smooth. Just by checking that, you'll notice some of it stayed smooth and some of it became sharp. So what it does is it looks at the angles between the faces of your mesh, dependent on this angle right here. And we either auto smooth everything with less than a 30 degree angle and keep everything that's more than a 30 degree angle sharp, which is kind of what we want. And you can change that degree angle to whatever number you want. You'll notice my shape changes as I do that. Okay, so those two commands together can control how the quality of your mesh quite a bit. So set smooth and shading, auto smooth over here underneath the object data button. Now remember I mentioned before about the double vertices that I made in the one spot. That can be a problem. You want to avoid double vertices. You want to avoid double faces. You want to avoid all of those problems as much as you can in your, in your object. Um, in fact, there's a page dedicated in this chapter that shows you examples of something called Z-fighting. Z-fighting is where you have a face on top of a face that are trying to occupy the same three-dimensional space. That can be found on page 310, where um, I'm not going to demonstrate an example of it, but you can look at it in the book. But if you ever render an image and you see like two faces that are kind of like shimmering, you know, blended in with each other, it's a good indication that you have double faces in there. You need to try to eliminate those. Easiest way to eliminate double faces is to try to eliminate double vertices right off the bat. So what I'm going to do with this pawn is I'm going to go back into edit mode. And I'm going to hit A for all twice. A will select all things. So A would deselect whatever was selected the first time. A the second time selected everything. So everything is selected right now. The nice thing about Blender is if I scroll down this tool shelf over here on the left hand side, you're going to find a panel where I can deal with doubles. Okay, so I can remove doubles like this. And it tells me up here in the top that it removed 32 vertices. And that was exactly how many I had doubled there at that time. That will make everything with your mesh go so much smoother when you do that stuff. Extruding is a really, really good command. I'm going to go back to object mode. And again, I'm using it here rather than hitting tab on my keyboard. Just to make it a little easier for you to see for right now. But in later chapters, I'm going to stop doing that because I, I believe in using the key commands. Let's add a cube over here. So I'm going to move my 3D bullseye over here spacebar or shift a or you can add under the create menu whichever way you'd like to try to do it mesh cube okay so here's a cube let's say i wanted to start extruding this cube into some type of funky shape well i always like to do my extrusions in wire form wireframe and again that's the z key let's go to a number one front view again now well, let's try three a side view we're going to go into edit mode again i'll hit tab to go into edit mode all vertices are currently selected, so I'll hit A to deselect. I'm going to hit B for box select. I'm going to drag a window around the top. And now I can hit E to extrude. And if I want to make a curve out of this, I can type R to rotate. G to grab. E to extrude. R to rotate. 
G to grab. If you wanted to start making it smaller or larger, you can add an S to that and scale it. I'm just trying to make like a U shape here, like a horseshoe magnet out of it. And with a little bit of practice, this gets a little easier for everybody. Again, the more divisions you have, the smoother your shape will look. I'm just trying to do something pretty quick here right now. And we'll make this one flat and grab it, move it down to about the same location. And extrude one more. Okay, let's go back to object mode. Let's go to solid shading. And there's the shape we just made. So now you've included a little bit of basic shaping and a basic extruding into your 3D dimension or 3D modeling tools. We've already talked about proportional editing. There's a neat section of knife project that would be good for you to read in that chapter as you go through it. And uh, let's talk about one more thing in here. How would you make something that looks like a landscape? Uh, I'm just going to go back to file. Um, hit new, reload startup file to start out with a new scene. Delete the initial cube, and this time I'm going to add a plane. So either space bar or shift A to add mesh plane. I'm going to hit scale. Scale that up. Looks like my commands disappeared on the side when I went to new. So I'm going to go down here and turn on my display your key commands on my screen again. Okay, and now let's see. It's hard for me to shape this into a landscape when it only has four corners, four points, four vertices. So what I need to do is subdivide this so I have a little bit more detail to my mesh. In order to do that, I need to go into edit mode, make sure all the vertices are selected with the A key. And if I look at my tool shelf again, there are a lot of interesting tools here. There's one here called subdivide. I click it once, I just subdivided the mes mesh once, twice, three times, four times. Subdivided it about four, we'll go one more five times. Let's say I want to make a hill back here in the corner. I'm going to right click and select a single vertex back here in the corner. I'm going to turn on proportional editing. Enable it. Hit G to grab. Remember if you scroll your mouse wheel larger or smaller with proportional editing you can select more or less. I'm going to hit Z to lock myself on the Z axis and I'm just going to scroll down a little bit further and I'm going to make a hill. And maybe you want a hill over here. G to grab, Z to lock it on the Z axis, and S to scale. Actually, I don't want to scale on that. G to grab, Z, scroll the mouse wheel to scale my selection area. So you get the idea. So now there's one way that you can generate a landscape pretty easily. So practice with those skills a little bit, try things out, read the chapter. The next video is going to deal with actually making the lighthouse and the landscape. So thanks for watching.